But first, we go in search of some man digits. Meet Dr Mark Brosnan, a psychologist at the University of Bath. He's not exactly God's gift to rugby. In fact, he's far more happy lurking in libraries. You could have worked that out for yourself if you'd had a chance to look at his hands. The ratio of the ring finger to the index finger can potentially tell a great deal about somebody. That's right. Study someone's fingers and you can tell how much of the hormone testosterone they were exposed to when they were in their mother's womb. Testosterone is the hormone that makes men... big... hairy... and square-jawed. But that's not testosterone's only effect. Mm. Exposure to prenatal testosterone is argued to influence the structure of the brain as it's developing within the womb. And that structure of the brain then goes on to uh, inform how we learn and develop in childhood in combination with other factors, but it's provided the building block for what's going on to form the adult brain, ultimately. Testosterone is funny stuff. Not only does a good slug of it in the womb result in the foetus developing what some would call a male brain, but they'll also end up with a ring finger longer than their index finger. Because women in general receive less prenatal testosterone in the womb, they tend to end up with ring and index fingers that are pretty similar in length. And a brain that is less interested in cars and football. Men, on the other hand, tend to have a small difference in the length of the two digits. The bigger hit you got in the womb, and the bigger the difference. It may also be that you'll have developed a brain that is more interested in blokey-type things. By now, you're probably looking at your own index fingers and wondering how blokey you are. But look carefully. The average difference between the ring and index finger for a man is only 2%, hence the calipers. And don't worry, ladies. If you find you have a longer ring than index finger, you can still wear a dress. It doesn't mean you're a man. It only means that, like the test department's Melanie here, you may have more of an interest in explosions and other things that men find fascinating. And that's what got Dr Brosnan thinking. It's often assumed that engineering and physics require a strongly male brain. And if that was the case, you'd expect people working in these sciences to have longer ring fingers than those working in the more, shall we say, effeminate disciplines like the social sciences. To see if this theory held any water, Dr Brosnan measured the fingers of both sides of the academic divide. 100 digits later, he had an answer, but not the one he expected. There were some unexpected findings in that the, the hard sciences, the physicists and the chemists, actually had a digit ratio and the finger length pattern that was typical of females, in that their finger length, their, their testosterone finger and their oestrogen finger, looked to be of a similar length, which counteracted the original arguments that uh, scientists would be extremely male thinking, would have extremely long fourth fingers. Whereas my research was contradicting that and saying, actually, a great deal of scientists have got very long index fingers, uh, more typical of the female profile. This was rather embarrassing for the idea that a long ring finger was an indication of a male-type brain. So Mad Labs decided to commission Dr Brosnan to measure the fingers of these aggressive little creatures, the University of Bath's women's rugby team. Here, there was no problem. Each and every one had a ring finger that towered over their stumpy little index digits. Four. Okay, that's the premiership finger. See? <laughs> that means you're a man. Premiership wife. That means you're a man. Not me here no, it does not. <laughs> I could be a premiership <laughs> wife. And indeed, she is conclusive proof that testosterone can give you a male brain, a male finger, but not necessarily a male body. 